We've taken a look at how we can select and manipulate our objects in Blender and even how to edit the components of a mesh. Meshes, curves, even grease pencil objects have an edit mode and their components are similar, but how they are manipulated can vary. This is why they are classified as these different kinds of objects. Each object, however, holds various data blocks. And these can include, but are not limited to, editable data. In this lesson, we'll be exploring data blocks in a bit more depth, specifically how they can be shared among objects. Let's compare a plane, a curve, and a NURB surface to demonstrate how different objects have different components, even if they share similarities. In edit mode, a mesh consists of vertices, edges, and faces. A curve objects has points, which can be analogous to vertices, but these points have handles, determining what kind of curve the segments between points will take. These segments can be analogous to edges and are drawn between points mathematically. A NURB surface is much like a mesh face, but it is described by curved segments. All of these objects, however, have an object container and a data block to describe how these components are arranged in 3D space. We saw in the last lesson that anything with an arrow next to it is hiding something. You can click on the arrow to reveal nested items and click again to rehide or collapse it. If we click on the arrow next to the cube, we reveal the data block icon nested inside the object container. If we click on the arrow next to this, we reveal that a material is nested inside that. A material is another type of data block. I'll toggle into front view, numpad one, and select the cube. I want to create a distinct duplicate. So for this, I can go up to the object menu and select duplicate objects. Take note of the hotkey, Shift D. When a duplicate is made, Blender automatically switches into move mode. The cursor looks like these four arrows in a square pattern, and I can hit X to constrain the movement to the X axis. I'll move this across to the left. I can hold down Control to snap this movement to unit increments. In the outliner, I'll rename this Cube Shift D. Let's give its data block a distinct name also. I'm going to call this Cube 2. I'll select the original cube. I'll toggle into edit mode and also into wireframe mode. Select these vertices on top and move them up a bit. So now that this cube is taller than the left cube, I'll toggle back into object mode just by hitting tab. Now let's make another duplicate of this original cube, but this time we're going to make a linked duplicate. Under the object menu, click on Duplicate Linked or use the hotkey Alt D. Blender will also jump into move mode for this, so we can click X to constrain the movement to the X axis and let's move it over to the right a couple of units. I'm going to name this one Cube Alt D. If we reveal the data blocks in the outliner, both Cube and Cube Alt D share the same data block. We can rename either of these. I'm going to do that now by double clicking on either data blocks under the original cube or Cube Alt D, and I'll name it Cube 1. You can see that they are both changed. A linked duplicate shares editable data. If I select the cube on the left, toggle into edit mode, and manipulate some of its vertices, only this cube is altered. This should be fairly obvious. But let's toggle back into object mode, select the middle cube, the original, toggle into edit mode, and manipulate some vertices in a similar manner. And look at this, the cube on the right also transforms. I'll toggle back into object mode. Now let's select the middle cube and rotate it a little bit. We can maybe scale it a little in one axis, but how come the right cube hasn't changed? 
The transformations here are performed at the object level. The shared data makes the cube on the right an instance of the original cube, but it still needs an object container for Blender to know its location, rotation, and scale. Now, all three cubes have a material nested under the mesh data block. It just so happens this material was assigned to the cube when we opened the general preset for Blender. So any duplication will have also copied over that material. Let's take a look at the materials tab for any of these cubes and edit some parameters of this material. For example, I'm going to make it red and rename it red. In the outliner, all the cubes now share the material named red because all we did was change the name. I'll toggle into material preview mode. We can do that up here or by hovering over the 3D viewport and using the Z hotkey and select material preview from the radial menu. I'll select the original cube and make a new material. I can duplicate the original material by clicking on this icon over here. And now this duplicate is named red.001. I'm gonna rename this to green and give it a green color. Now cube and cube alt D share the same material because they still have linked data, but cube shift D is still red. Some data blocks can be added to an instanced object independently. Let's select the cube alt D and give this a couple of modifiers. First, I'll give it a subdivision surface modifier and set it to simple just to increase its vertex count. Then a simple deform to twist it. Notice how the modifier has not been added to the original cube. But if we toggle into edit mode and edit the original cube, this has an effect on cube alt D. Now, data blocks might seem like a confusing concept at this stage, but they are a powerful bit of knowledge to have in your toolkit. For now, however, we might want to move on to the next topic, and this could be a lesson that you revisit at a future time. <laughs>